The Samsung QN95B 4K Neo QLED TV brings back the One Connect box, four HDMI 2.1 ports with 48 gigabits bandwidth, and mini LED technology with amazing black levels. Let's get into it. Current pricing on the Samsung QN95B is as follows, 55 inch for $1,800, 65 inch for $2,400, 75 inch for $3,000 and the 85 inch comes in at $3,500, which is a great deal for a TV that size. Samsung sent over the 65 inch variant of this TV for me to review and unboxing it is pretty run of the mill, but make sure you have a second set of hands to help you move the panel around to assemble the stand. Assembling the stand is pretty straightforward. There are three pieces and each piece has four screws to attach the stand. So 12 screws in total. While setting up the stand, you can see the actuators on the back of the panel, which do help out with sound. Is the sound on this TV good by itself? Yes, it is. Would I still pair it with an external sound device like a sound bar or a home theater? Yes, yes I would. Let's look at the One Connect box, which is where you will connect all your devices. We have four HDMI ports, and as I stated before, they are all 48 gigabits per second bandwidth for 4K 120Hz HDR VRR gaming, so you're good to go there. HDMI 3 is your designated eARC port. You also have a few USB ports, your standard cable connector, digital optical output port, Ethernet port, and on the far right, we have the port for connecting the one connect cable. This is a straightforward connection, one on the back of the TV, and the other end goes to the one connect box. They give you two sizes of cable. I used the longer cable so I can place the TV connections closer to other devices as seen here. Let's get into what I don't like about the TV and that is one thing and one thing only and that is the Tizen OS. Samsung has been using the Tizen OS for quite some time now and I just, I despise the thing. It tries to figure out what you've connected to it and I connected the brand new Denon X3800H to it and it just, for like a couple of days, could not recognize the device. And I had to keep on selecting, you know, try again or skip it. And finally, after a few days, it recognized it. But let's get into what I do like about the TV, and that's the picture quality. Now, if you follow the channel, you guys know that I'm not a super duper big hardcore LED LCD TV fan. I'm a total OLED guy, and I'm also not a huge Samsung fan. But I gotta say, the QN95B is a fantastic TV. With 720 zones of mini LEDs lighting the IPS panel, the picture is phenomenal. The QN95B performs very well with dark scenes like these in Raya the Last Dragon. I personally am very sensitive to blooming and even on the Q90T, the Q90R, I did notice that quite a bit. But in this TV, I notice it a lot less. So those mini LEDs sure are doing their job. There are instances where I do see a little bit of blooming, but it's not as obvious as the previous generations of this TV. Let's also not forget that the QLED is bright. My equipment's on the fritz, haven't got it fixed yet. So I did get some measurement data from another source and they said 10% window HDR, they're measuring 1700 nits, wow. That is bright. If you look at any of the scenes where they're performing on stage in the movie A Star is Born, lights on stage are bright, like blinding on this TV, which kind of does add to the immersive nature of having a panel so bright. It feels like I'm on stage or in the crowd. The picture is sharp and the colors look glorious. I would use either movie or filmmaker mode for most of my watching. As far as gaming is concerned, here's some footage from the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in 4K 120. It works without issue on the Xbox Series X, so you're not going to have any problems there. I did connect the Xbox to HDMI number 4. You can connect it into HDMI 1, 2, 3, or 4, but just remember HDMI 3 is your designated eARC port, and if you have a soundbar or AV receiver, you're going to connect that up to HDMI 3. If you want to know how to set up 4K 120Hz gaming on this TV so you don't have to wait for it to think about it, follow these steps. We're going to open up the settings menu again, select all settings, scroll down and select connection. Next, select external device manager, then select input signal plus. 
Here is where you will set up 4K HDR for your external inputs. If I have 4K HDR devices on all inputs, I would turn all these on just like you see here. Then we close out of the menu and you are good to go. Now, if you use all the TV's inbuilt apps for your Netflix and Amazon and all that to watch content from, and you wanna know how to set up eARC, well, let me just tell you that the following apps work with Dolby Atmos. Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, the Disney Plus app, the Apple TV app, HBO Max, and Vudu. I know these are the most popular apps, so I tested them out, and we have Dolby Atmos passing from the TV to my AVR, and we're gonna get into how to set that up right now. All right, first thing you need to do is go to your external sound device, in this case, the brand new Denon AVR X3800H. And in their menus, you're gonna need to turn on ARC. You should consult your device's manual to find out how to turn on ARC because it's different for every device. Press the home button on the remote, go left, then down to menu and select settings. Click on all settings, scroll down and select sound. Next, select expert settings, turn HDMI eARC mode from off to auto, then change digital output audio format from auto to pass through. Everything else should be at the default setting. One last thing we need to do is make sure HDMI CEC is turned on. Go to the connection section of the menu. Scroll down and select external device manager and make sure the top option HDMI CEC is turned on, which it already is in this case. Once that's done, you're good to go to send audio from the TV apps straight to your external sound device and if you have something like an Xbox connected to HDMI 4 and you have an um, AV receiver or soundbar connected to HDMI 3, this will now allow the audio, the Dolby Atmos, to pass from the Xbox through the TV and then to your external sound device, whether it be a soundbar or an AV receiver. You should be set up and ready to go. So after a couple of months with the QN95B, I got to say Samsung did a great job stepping up their flagship 4K TV to this level. The darkroom performance on this mini LED TV is actually very, very good. And that's one of the things that was very, very surprising for me. Now this 65 inch comes in at $2,400. Now, if you don't need the one connect box, maybe look at the QN90B, which is coming in at $1,600 for a 65 inch. Or my recommendation, because I like OLEDs, check out the new QD OLED, the S95B from Samsung, the 65 inch is around $1,800. So out of these three Samsung TVs, the QN95B is their flagship. It does cost the most. It does have the cool sound. If you were to wall mount this, it would look pretty hot and sexy up on that wall. And if you want a really good TV in a large size, the 85 inch right now at $3,500 is a steal. So make sure you check that out as well. So if you want the best of the best 4K LED TV, definitely check out the Samsung QN95B. Links are down in the description. Of course, Samsung TVs do have a couple of bad sides. For me, it's that Tizen OS. And of course, there's no Dolby Vision support. I know that's a deal breaker for a lot of you out there. Weigh all the options out before you're buying something this week on Black Friday or Cyber Monday the following week. And thank you again to Samsung for sending this TV over for me to review. That's it. That's all. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.